today I'd like to talk about the four things that I think trip beginning tapestry weavers up the most. So here are those four things. Number one is to wait for the popped up warp. Here's what I mean by wait for the popped up warp. We're gonna move this purple over to here and the gray to here. And often people look at this and they think that warp right there isn't covered. I've got a problem. And they'll dig down here and try to somehow cover that warp. Don't do that. If you have a loom like this Mirax where this shed is held open for me, I know that if a, a warp is in the back shed, as this one is, I don't touch it right now until I change my shed. Wait for the popped up warp means change the shed there. Now the warp that I need to cover is, quote, popped up, and I can wrap it. In this case, the gray is going to wrap it. Either one of these two could wrap around that warp. One of them has to cover it, or it will actually be a naked warp. But in this case, easily done. And now all my warps are covered. Number two is to finish your sequence. The next problem that beginners often have is not finishing their sequence. You'll get to somewhere like this, and you'll tap that down and you'll be ready and you'll decide that right here for whatever reason you want this gray over here and you can't figure out how to make that happen. I can't do this of course because for one thing I just created a float right there and I've trapped this purple and won't be able to weave with that. So this is the point where I will say finish your sequence because on the next pick I'll be able to move this gray over. So here I finished my sequence. And now if I want that gray to move over here, I can easily weave it on top and move this purple in. Number three is use, meet, and separate. The third thing I want to encourage you to do is to always use, meet, and separate. That allows you to make sure that everything works without putting two um, pieces of weft in the same shed. If I don't have meet and separate, for example, if these two butterflies are going the same direction, and then if I want to move this green one over the purple one, I again have that same problem I showed you before where this one is trapped. The only way I can move one butterfly over the other without meet when I don't have meat and separate is to put two in the same shed. So I would have had to have back here put this purple one on top of the green. And of course having two butterflies in the same shed like that gives you lice. Which means, as you can see here, you're going to see little bits of warp. So imagine if every time I moved a butterfly I was causing that in my weaving. That's what happens when you don't use meat and separate. So use it. The fourth one is to bubble more than you think you should. By bubbling, of course, I mean putting extra weft in. And um, this is super common. If you see your warps drawing together, the spacing here getting narrower, or the edges of your piece coming in, it's quite possible that you are not putting in enough bubble. Something like that. So there you have it. Next time you're at your loom and you're in a muddle and you're not quite sure how you got there, think of this list of four things and whether one of them might be the reason. Happy weaving. I'll catch you next time. Oh, go ahead. I'll wait while you write these down. Oh, wait a minute. I made a little cheat sheet for you. Here is uh, a nice little printout with some cute artwork with those four things on them. You can go to my blog from December 7, 2017, print yourself a copy of this, and put it right over your loom so you remember as you weave. I'll catch you later. <laughs>